Girl, you've got questions. Questions about your body and how to feel good in it, about your hormones and how to keep them in check. Questions about your sex life and your whole health. Can you imagine having a best girlfriend who was also a triple board certified OBGYN? A girlfriend doctor you could call and ask or tell her anything. Someone who could show you how to live any stage of life before, during, or after menopause in a big, bold, and beautiful way. Well, friends, I'm your girlfriend doctor. I believe you are meant to flourish and shine, to embrace life and awaken to all its possibilities. Let's get there together. Welcome to our show. Hi, everyone. It's Dr. Anna, the girlfriend doctor, and I'm so excited about today's show. I had a viewer call in and ask this very important question. Let's go to this viewer right now. Dr. Anna, my name is Diana. I'm 47 years old and I have breastfed two kids who are now in middle school and I am really struggling with the droopy breast. After breastfeeding and getting it older, how, what courses of action can I take to improve the shape of my breast? I don't know if I should get implants or um, I hear bad bad things about implants, but I also just um, want to know if there are other options. So what can you tell me? Great question. And you're not alone. I know many of us have this issue. I've had four babies, breastfed four babies, and that can certainly affect our breast health elasticity. And what happens as we age with hormonal changes, this can all affect the quality of our breast. So to dive deep into the answer to what will improve our breast health shape and function, I brought in two experts. One is Mindy Jones Lee. I've known her for 20 years, amazing. And she's going to talk about breast exercises that we can do as well as knock out some myths. The second expert I have on for today is a woman who had her own journey with breast cancer and found that it wasn't acceptable, the status quo. And she wanted to recreate beauty post mastectomy for herself and for anyone else who suffered with breast diseases, surgery, and mastectomy, or who just want comfort and beauty all in one. Beyond exercise, beyond accessories, certain things that we can do to improve the quality of our breast and our health in general is to be empowered and to be empowered in our own body. I always say we wanna be the CEO or the, our own best physician, the CEO of our body. And ways to do this to increase healthy breast tissue is to get keto green. So in my books, Keto Green 16, as well as the Hormone Fix, I go deep into the combination of alkalinizing nutrient-rich foods with a ketogenic diet that incorporates intermittent fasting, which has been shown scientifically to be breast protective and actually decrease our risk of breast cancer by decreasing certain inflammatory markers in our body as well. So getting keto green and doing intermittent fasting as well as some extended fast is critical for healthy breast. That's number one. Number two is adding in powerful alkalinizers, nutrition such as cruciferous vegetables like your broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, nutrients that really help our breasts. And don't forget sprouts like broccoli sprouts, alfalfa sprouts, these micro herbs that add in flavor, texture, and a lot of powerful micronutrients that will keep you feeling healthy and doing your best. Well, I'm excited to dive deep with our experts. Let's get going. Come join me on the couch. We have a couple experts today that are gonna talk about making our breasts look beautiful. It's not vain, it's part of being healthy body image. And one of my key pillars is shining and another flourishing, being whole and healthy and happy in our body. So this question about droopy breasts, I mean, there's so many things that we can do about it. Certainly hormone health, getting keto green, making sure we're getting plenty of fats, breaking up with inflammatory foods and sugar and alkalinizing our body, that's really an important part for hormone balance. And when our hormones are balanced, our tissues are balanced, and that includes our breast tissue. So we're gonna get into um, 
a great expert interview with the girlfriend doctor expert in exercise. That is my dear friend, Mindy Jones Lee. I have known this young woman for nearly 20 years now, and she is an inspiration in so many ways, as you will see. Well, Mindy, I'm glad to have you here as our expert in exercise for the Girlfriend Doctor Show. And um, a question we had brought in was about droopy breasts. And I just, I love your exercise routines and your philosophy to help. And we want to keep our breast tissue exercised, healthy, stronger muscles, stronger blood supply, healthier breast, and addressing this issue of breast droop. Now, I remember in fifth grade reading, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret by Judy Bloom, And the exercise that we learned is, um, I must, I must increase my bust. So... <laughs> Yeah, is that yeah, is that the one we need to I, do? <laughs> yeah, I remember um, that as well. It actually uh, would be this would be back. This would be a back movement, and this would be uh, I must, I must, I must uh, increase my bust. Ah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> so uh, share with us a little bit about you know how we can improve breast muscles and to improve that lift naturally. Okay, yes, it's super important to keep the body balanced. I've been in the fitness field for over 20 years, about as long as I've known you. I've been interested in fitness as a trainer on my own gym and then got multiple certifications. Um, but it's very, very important first to feed the muscle. You're not going to build a muscle without the right, correct food, and that's where your nutrition comes into hand. Um, but the muscle, the pectoral underneath, you have a major and a minor, is very important to hit them at different angles. And you can actually, no matter what the age, um, you can lift and perk. So a lot of the women are interested in um, the cleavage factor and then also just maintaining that perk because you're not, you don't have to sag as you get older. That's just a myth. You need to work the muscle properly. Yeah, I agree. And I know we have the same philosophy about eating, eating clean, keto green and um, nourishing our body. You were in money early adapters and one of my guinea pigs when I created Mighty Maca. And yes. uh, you used it in your pregnancies. You've taken it for over a decade now. Yeah. And all three of my boys um, love it. So <laughs> they they, that is their go-to. If they don't want breakfast, you know, if they w don't want a big breakfast, they will definitely fuel up on Mighty Maca. And then right before their soccer game, I've got a 12 year old, 11 year old and a three year old. And the three year old loves it. I have to monitor him so he doesn't OD. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, I love that. All right. Will you show us some of the exercises that we should all be doing? And it doesn't matter how old we are, because we talked about, you know, um, improving our breast muscles. And if we've had breast surgery, mastectomy, just starting light, but these are important exercises as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. First, you want to get the range of motion. So it's very important after you've had a mastectomy or a double mastectomy to get that range of motion because you're going to possibly have some scar tissue. So I recommend, you know, not even putting two balls, two tennis balls in your hand at first just to get the muscle recruitment um, and then move up. I don't have heavy weights. These are five pound plates. Uh, for me, um, obviously, you know, my big male clients, they can use more, but it's not necessarily about the weight selection as far as how heavy you can go. It's about the proper uh, movements. So you'll know when I do this, you can watch my wrists. There's a, a turn in at the very end, and you can think about that as lifting um, the three different portions of the breast. I also wanted to cover, there is a, um, a myth out there uh, that working your chest will make your breast overall smaller, and that is a complete myth. Working your chest and building your muscle, yes, it will be uh, build lean mass, and that will help you shed weight all over your body, but it doesn't make your chest smaller. If anything, it makes it perky, stand up, uh, a very nice, balanced body. Thank you for addressing that. That's an important consideration. <laughs> All right, Not for me, but we're good. All right. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to lay down. There's three different movements. Um, so one, you want to have your hips lifted and engage your glutes. You draw in your core because your body is a system of systems and you're working it all, not just your pectorials. So the first one is the bottom, and I always like to work with a pulse to engage the muscle. So hopefully you can see me. Yes, okay. I see you perfect. Um, so my hands are up. I have light weights. 
So I kind of scoop up first, and then I bring them together. Back down, my hips are lifted, core glutes engaged, and you're kind of scooping. So down, halfway up, and then scoop. So that is the first exercise. Okay. So do that maybe 10, 12 reps. Then and you Mindy, lay down flat. You can do Mindy, this on a bench as well. Mindy, I want to make oh, sorry. You're, on, you're um, lifting up your hips to engage your core more and um, to put it an angle. To put so it in an angle. Right now, then I, you're working underneath the breast and engaging the pecs in a different angle. Gravity works and you work with it. Okay. So that changes. Now you drop the hips. If you were at the gym, you would do a decline bench, but I didn't want to make sure everybody, not everybody has access to the gym. This one, your spine is flat. So you're working a different portion of the pectoral. Same move, but watch my wrists. So you then you come together, but they are in line with your shoulders. So right above your chest. So engage, and then you really want to squeeze. Now my arms are not straight, and my hands are turned towards my face. That is the second. You rotate all the way up and squeeze like you had a grapefruit in between your breasts. <laughs> That's number two. All right, now the third one is the hardest. You take your hips back up. It is a full engagement of all the entire pectoral. So the arms above the head, I can still see the weight. So they're not way back here, they're right here. And you make a kind of like a circle and then you scoop from the bottom and then go back around. So you can constantly see the weights. You don't ever lose sight of the weights. And it very, very much causes the lifting of the breast because you're working from underneath up. I that, love it. Now, how many, how many reps and just do one set of each or what's the prescription for that? I would say anywhere 10 to 12 reps, each one of the exercises. Now, if you're just a big, you know, if you're beginning, um, then you can, you know, do as many as you feel like you can maintain form. So it's not as many reps as possible. It's as many reps as you can maintain good form. If your arms start shaking, if your elbows start straightening and locking out, then discontinue. So I would say maybe two rep, two rounds of that, and that is plenty. Give yourself adequate rest in between. That is something that's very, very important for hormones as well. You know, do a set, rest. Do a set, rest. Excellent. Okay, and that would be ten to twelve of each exercise, and uh, two rounds, and then how many times a week? Maybe three times. Because you want to give your body enough rest. So maybe Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Yep. And it doesn't take very long at all. All right. Thank you. So I, I love that. I love these exercises. And you had sent me the videos and I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. And recognizing how important that range of movement is, because what I really noticed with the over the head movement, if we're not doing that, that's going to restrict our limitation, like putting on shirts that go over the head or bras that snap in the back to really also increase that range of motion. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a big fan of functional movement. Right. I don't believe in things that do not make sense biologically in, uh, in life. You should be able to move range of motion. That is why your shoulders are ball and socket. Uh, and you should do that often because we will build up, um, you know, like adhesions and it will draw us forward and have bad posture. Whereas when you work that range of motion, you open your chest up, it's better for breathing, it's better for your abdominal sculpting, uh, all that lifting, it's very, very good. But you have to feed yourself properly when we work. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for being our exercise expert here on the Girlfriend Doctor Show. This is Mindy Jones Lee. She is in South, in North Florida and also Energy Holistic Health on Instagram. I love your Instagrams. Thank yes, you. And I will come see Rebecca soon and she will be demonstrating these exercises. <laughs> yes, you will. <laughs> All right. All right, have a good weekend. Doctor. Thank you, Mindy. Love you. Bye. Bye.
Welcome back. We're going to continue on this topic of making our breast even more beautiful, right? What we can do. We've talked about exercise, nutrition, and important lifestyle hacks that can improve our health. And now I'm bringing on a beautiful friend of mine, uh, our amazing, with an amazing story. Her name is Dana Donafrey. She is the founder of Anna Ono, a intimate line for women initially that have had mastectomies, breast surgeries, breast cancer. And Dana, it's great to have you here with us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's really an honor to be here. Well, one of the things that is um, a myth is that you need all the support to have lifted, healthy breast, beautiful breast. So can you go into that? Because I've got your beautiful bras right here and you've got your models in the background. But I mean, it, we want to talk about this, but beauty, comfort, practicality, and that serves us for better health and um, better fashion. And then just, you know, again, comfort and practicality, right? No binders, great material. And I love just being able to have some great, sexy, black lacy bras. Thank you. <laughs> Well, you know, it, it all starts with a, a huge myth, right? And we can go back and rewind the hands of time, but men have been designing our bras for way, way, way too long. So, you know, we really, as women, should be thinking about what makes us comfortable. And I believe at Ana Ono that you don't have to sacrifice comfort for beauty. You can actually have both. So we're proud to say that none of our styles have an underwire that is either A, ill-fitting or causing additional pain and discomfort. Um, it's great to sleep in a bra. You know, skin is elastic. It can stretch out over time. So our bras are really super soft to sleep in. So if you are wearing the underwire bra during the day, because you do like a little additional lift or support, you know, it's nice to stay comfortable as well while you sleep. And, and that really started after my breast reconstructive surgery. I, I couldn't use those lifted bras anymore, but I still wanted something that supported me and helped me feel beautiful. Well, talk about your story because you were diagnosed with breast cancer at a very young age and you found the lump yourself. I was diagnosed at 27, uh, now 10 years ago, but you're absolutely right. I was in the shower. I wasn't doing monthly breast exams. I will admit to that, um, although you should be 100%, but um, I accidentally found the lump in my shower and I thought, oh, you know, that, that wasn't there before. And it was just one of those things where it didn't sit well with me and I, I called my doctor and I, I went through all of the testing and the unfortunate side to that was I received a phone call on the day before my 28th birthday and right before my bridal shower that told me I had breast cancer. Oh, wow. And family history, any risk factors? Nothing to be overly aware of breast cancer. My mom's sister had breast cancer when she was 35, now 40 years ago. So uh, she was also a young patient and survivor, but I went through all the genetic testing and, and nothing came up in our family lineage. So it's, you know, it's hard to say my oncologist called my cancer environmental, but at 27 years old, how much damage can you really do? Yeah, that's powerful. And so from that, from that experience, then you went through mastectomy. I had a bilateral mastectomy. Um, I had my cancerous side on my right side, but as I was going through all of the testing, I ended up with a chest MRI that showed a hot spot on my healthy side. And I went through another biopsy, another round of testing. And I really thought to myself, if this is my life, that every six months I'm going to go for a scan and every six months they're going to find another spot and I'm going to constantly be in this biopsy train. It just wasn't something I could sign up for for a lifetime. So I opted for a bilateral mastectomy with breast implant reconstruction. And that took you on this journey to find something that was comfortable, you know, made you feel good and fit. Well, when I went out shopping for a quote unquote mastectomy bra, I was given an armful of beige utilitarian grandma bras as my option. And I cried myself uh, to sleep for days and for hours. I couldn't even drive my car after that appointment. And I just realized at that moment that my body had changed forever. And I've been a fashion designer for what I will say for my entire life. I started making clothing when I was eight. So I literally took to the sketchbook and took to my sewing machine and started making bras that fit my body. And I realized that I wasn't the only person uh, that was facing this challenge. And, and that's really where Ana Ono was born, just to empower ourselves. Even though our breasts aren't there, doesn't mean we're any less of a woman. Ah, oh, no, I love that. And the fact you went, you know, a, a common link, you went to Savannah College of Art and Design um, in Savannah, Georgia. I'm from St. Simons Island, Georgia. And so just know how 
powerful that school is too and and what a great um alumni you are for that for students to follow and follow your dreams and using these talents and gifts so now you have anna ono it's available you ship all over and um show us some of your designs that you have yeah, at Ana Ono, uh, we really do service the world. I mean, we know that breast cancer doesn't just happen here in the United States, and we all need a little love and support in our lives after diagnosed. And what we really aim to do is be there from the point of surgery, through your treatment, maybe radiation therapy or whatever additional surgeries you might need to undergo, and eventually into your life beyond. So you can see right here over my shoulder um, it is our recovery wear line. And it is a robe that has some drains, and some drain pockets, so after the mastectomy, you can manage them very easily. I love it because you can wrap yourself up and get wheelchaired out of the hospital, still with your dignity and femininity intact. And we like to say that we have a recover collection, which is really all about the softness. What you said earlier with the soft bra, it's really our key to comfort. Um, it's something so silky smooth against the skin. And we do a front closure bra as well following your mastectomy. So as you can see, it's got a nice little front closure here. Everything is really, really soft. You can gum it all up. You can wash it. You can dry it. So this really helps you stay protected after your mastectomy. And then through there, maybe you undergo some radiation therapy. So you want something soft against your skin, something that's not very abrasive, hidden seams, things like that. And um, then we go into a reclaim moment. So we like to say this is when feminine details are introduced back into your life. So maybe you're not quite ready for the black lacy sexy bra, but you want to get there. So we even have front closure styles that have beautiful lace details. They're pocketed. So that way, if you need to use a breast form, you can slide it right into the pocket. We call ours foobs, made for fake boobs. So that way you can <laughs> slide it in and out. You can enjoy comfort, still mimic a breast underneath your clothing if that's what you want. Or they even lay flat against your chest. You can see uh, Janine here over in the back. She's got actually a flat side from a unilateral mastectomy. The camisole lays gorgeously up against her skin. So she doesn't even have to put a form in if she doesn't want to. And that's really what we're about in our uh, reveal collection. We want you to celebrate your life as it is, your body as it is. So we like to say two breasts, one breast, no breasts, or new breasts are here to support you. Uh, I love it. I love it. And how do people find you? Well, we are online at www.anaono.com. And if you have trouble remembering the name Ana Ono, just remember it's my name, Dana Donafrey, without the double Ds. <laughs> that is so amazing. That is very clever. Very clever, Dana. I love it. Awesome. Well, I thank you so much for being here. I love your Instagram too and um, what you're doing to really elevate our own body acceptance and empowering women to continue their journey and uniquely and with as much flourish and shine that they want. So I want to thank you for that and, um, and share a little bit more that it's, you know, it's, it's a journey and it's not over and there's always something that we can do. And just that sense of self pampering, self care, and reclaiming that femininity as well. Thank you, Dana. Thank you for having me. And, and thank you for helping us bring awareness to this very important subject. Appreciate Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you. I'll see you next time. everyone. As we wrap up the show, I just want to emphasize how important it is for nutrition. And having worked as a physician with so many clients that have had breast cancer or breast lumps or fibrocystic breast, painful, tender breast, issues such as surgery, breast cyst, etc. I want to tell you there's so much we can do to empower our body naturally as much as possible. As you've learned from our first episode of The Girlfriend Doctor and as well as this episode, how important it is for nourishing our body, our mind, and our spirit. So my products that I've created with special interest for me, my health, and my patients' health, especially my clients with breast cancer, because I always think, what can, what can I do for them that's safe and gives them another solution, gives them an an answer, gives them help, assistance along their journey. Because often once you're through with breast cancer therapy or treatment, you're just in a waiting, holding mode. And I don't want that for anyone. I want you to be empowered. You're the physician, the CEO of your health, of your own body. And 
I created products to help you along this journey as well. And so Mighty Maca, of course, my 30, over 30 superfoods combined from my journey around the world is alkalinizing. It helps clients, my breast cancer clients have said, hot flashes, menopause symptoms, decreases appetite, and it's very alkalinizing and helps with energy naturally. So this is good for all of us. And you heard Mindy say that even her young boys have been drinking it for, for many years now. And so that's our Mighty Maca. This is 60 serving canister and we have travel packs, single sticks to go also. Keto green, zero grams of sugar in this all-in-one meal replacement. This is foundational too. Making a shake a day we know keeps us healthy and having micronutrients to absorb easily into our body. So healthy fats, good amount of detoxifiers, methylated B vitamins, micronutrients, that all-in-one meal replacement in ze with zero grams of sugar. So no, you know, low carb. And um, my favorite is Jolva to help women with vaginal dryness and vulvar atrophy. One of uh, the clients, one of my clients whose name is Nancy, she was 65 years old when she became a client and she had been diagnosed with breast cancer when she was 56 years old. She was a pro golfer. She'd gone through her treatment and her doctors just said, you're going to suffer with vaginal atrophy nothing we can do. Uh, her partner came across Jolva and she started, gave it to Nancy and she started using it. And she said within days she had comfort. She felt comfortable in her clothes because her underwear would even chafe. And she used to get chronic yeast infections from golfing and being out in the sweat and heat. And it was an area that she was struggling with. And so she is a proud, um, advocate for Jolva. Her oncologist said it was okay for her to use. I always recommend you check with your oncologist and, um, and just reverse those problems she'd been suffering with for almost a decade. So this is where our whole health comes in so that we can flourish and we can embrace what life has to offer so that we can reconnect with our body inside out in our relationships. And that's an important factor that we want to live with as we go through our journey, as we are fulfilling our many purposes. And for me, as your girlfriend doctor, I wanna see you flourish in all areas of your life. I wanna see you shine and embrace your beautiful, bold beauty and embrace, embrace what life has to offer and feel embraced and loved and to awaken, awaken to the possibilities and the potential that you have for your life and for those you love, whether you're before, during, or well after menopause. I am here for you. I am the Girlfriend Doctor and check out our show notes at dranna.com. Go to the podcast page and you'll see some key takeaways, our show notes, and where you can connect with more, uh, connect with us more, as well as message me with a question that may be on your heart or soul and mind. And remember, there's no such thing as TMI. Till next time, cheers.